In a previous video, I discussed and demonstrated how you can achieve high availability for your application in a cost-effective way. And I did so by using Pod Anti-Affinity, Istio Destination Rules, and Carpenter. This time I want to address the same problem, but with different solutions. To achieve workload availability, I'm going to use Pod Topology Spread Constraints. Topology spread constraints allow you to make your application available across different failure or topology domains, like hosts, AZs, or regions. This approach works very well when you're trying to ensure fault tolerance as well as availability by having multiple replicas in each of the different topology domains. Pod anti-affinity rules, on the other hand, can easily produce a result where you have a single replica in a topology domain because the pods with an anti-affinity toward each other have a repelling effect. And you can set how strict you want the anti-affinity rule to be, but you don't have much control over how the pods will spread out across the nodes or AZs. As you can imagine, a single replica on a dedicated node isn't ideal for fault tolerance, but it's also not a good use of resources. With topology spread constraints, you have more control over the spread or distribution that the scheduler should try to apply across the topology domains in your cluster. And there are a few important properties that you should be aware of when using this particular approach. Max skew, topology key, when unsatisfiable, and the label selector. Max skew is used to control or determine the maximum point to which things can be uneven across the topology domains. For example, if an application has seven replicas and is deployed across three AZs, you can't get an even spread, but you can influence how uneven things will be. In this case, the max skew can be anything between one and seven. A value of one means we can potentially end up with a spread like two, two, three across our topology domains. The topology key is a key for one of the node labels and defines the type of topology domain like a zone and is paired with an appropriate value. In this case, a value could be an AZ like EU West 1A. When unsatisfiable is used to determine how you want the scheduler to respond if the desired constraints can't be satisfied. And the label selector is used to find matching pods so that the scheduler can be aware of them when deciding where to place pods in accordance with the constraints that you have specified. And there are other fields, you can read about them, and I've put a link to the docs in the description below. Now, as I mentioned, this is a follow-up to the problem of managing cross-zone traffic costs. We've got a better spread of our application, but how do we ensure that traffic coming from a certain point of origin targets an upstream destination in the same AZ? I'm going to use topology-aware hints. Topology-aware hints are enabled by default in EKS 1.24. If you're using an EKS version prior to that, then you'll need to upgrade to this particular version in order for you to use this feature. When looking at topology aware hints, it's important to understand how services, endpoint slices, and the queue proxy work together when routing traffic. Services are load balancers that route traffic to pods. They're a network abstraction layer that sit in front of pods and have a stable IP. Pods, on the other hand, are ephemeral. And so the list of corresponding IP addresses that should receive traffic is continuously changing. Next, let's consider endpoint slices. When a service is created, multiple endpoint slices are created. Each endpoint slice has a list of endpoints containing a subset of pod addresses along with the nodes that they're running on and any additional topology information. Lastly, we have the cube proxy. The cube proxy is a daemon set that runs on every node in your cluster and also fulfills a role of internal routing, but it does so based on what it consumes from endpoint slices. When topology aware hints are enabled and implemented on a service, the endpoint slice controller will proportionally allocate endpoints to the different zones that your cluster is spread across. For each of those endpoints, it will also set a hint for the zone. Hints describe which zone an endpoint should receive traffic for. The cube proxy will then route traffic from a zone to an endpoint based on the hints that get applied. Now, in some cases, the endpoint slice controller may apply a hint for a different zone, meaning the endpoint could end up serving traffic originating from a different zone entirely. And the reason for this is to try and maintain an even distribution of traffic betwe between the different zones in your cluster. Lastly, I'm going to be using Carpenter the same way I did last time around. And just like Carpenter did with the anti-affinity rules, it will respect the pod topology spread constraints when adding nodes to the cluster. 
All right, so I've already got my EKS cluster up and running in the EU West 1 region. And as you can see over here, I'm running version 1.24. Now I'm going to switch to my editor and do a brief code walkthrough. I have a deployment for an application called Express Test that will spin up 10 pod replicas. And if you look toward the bottom of the file, you'll see that I'm setting a topology spread constraint with a max skew of one, and I'm setting a zonal topology spread, as you can see in the topology key field. And I still want the scheduler to schedule the pods, even if the constraints can't be satisfied. In the label selector, you'll see that it specifies the key val value pair attached to each pod. So for 10 replicas and a max skew of one, we'll probably see a 334 spread across the three different AZs in the region. And lastly, right at the bottom, you'll see that I'm setting a node selector field to ensure that this application only runs on nodes added by Carpenter. So those are the configurations to take care of the availability of the application. Now let's move on to topology aware hints. So the first thing to do is make sure that you're running the right EKS version as I've already specified. And another prerequisite is for the nodes in your cluster to have the right label specifying the topology or failure domains that they're running in. Carpenter will automatically apply the appropriate labels just like EKS normally does. Now, as for the service that will be proxying traffic to your pods, you need to add the topology aware hints annotation and set it to auto, just as you can see over here. I'd also advise you to read through the safeguards and constraints in the documentation, just so you know how to avoid a situation of the endpoint slice controller not applying the relevant hints to the endpoints. And the last thing that I'll show you is my provisioner file. And I simply want to show you that I have consolidation enabled so that Carpenter prioritizes reducing my cluster costs when adding nodes to the cluster. Now I'm going to deploy my application and let's see how the scheduler and Carpenter respond to the constraints that I've specified. All right, as you can see, all of the pod replicas are running successfully, and you might have noticed that there were new nodes that were provisioned or added to the cluster rather. So let's see which AZs these nodes have been created in. So this node has been added to EU West 1A, and you can see over here that it is controlled by Carpenter and the same provisioner that I showed you earlier, Express Test. And this node is running in EU West 1B, as you can see over there, it's a particular failure domain. And lastly, we have this new node, and it is running in EU West 1C. So we've got three nodes that were spun up in each of the respective zones, but the next thing we want to see is how the pods have been spread out across the different AZs in the different nodes. And there you have it. You can see we've got three pods running on the node in EU West 1A, four pods running in the node in EU West 1B, and three nodes running in the node in EU West 1C. So it's a 343 spread. The last thing I'm going to do is have a look at the endpoint slice for the application and see whether or not the endpoint slice controller has applied hints to the endpoints so that the kube proxy knows the zones that the endpoints should serve traffic for. And you can see here that we have an array of endpoints. I'm going to scroll down and you can see that we do have hints that have been applied. And in this case, the hint specifies that the endpoint running in EU West 1A should serve traffic 
for the same zone, EU West 1A. If I scroll down further, we should see something similar for the other endpoints as well. Here's another one with the exact same case of EU West 1A. Here's an endpoint, and we can see in this case it's for EU West 1B. The pod is running in this particular zone, and the hint is applied saying that it should serve traffic coming from the same zone, EU West 1B. But let's find one that serves traffic from a different zone. All right, here we go. And you can see in this particular case, this is our endpoint, and the pod is running in EU West 1C. But in this case, the hint that is applied says that it should serve traffic coming for, from EU West 1B. Thanks a lot for watching. If you have any feedback, please provide it in the comment section below and stay tuned for more.